Hi everyone, I'm Yildiz from Yildiz Readings 5 Day. We're going to cover your astro forecast, covering all your romance, your career, you name it, we're covering it. Now we did have an action-packed October and we did have the full moon in Taurus on October the 31st. Now I'll be covering each of these within each of your zodiac signs. Please look at your sun, moon and rising. And if you do want to book a reading, you can go to the link directly below. We're also going to be doing additional reads during the month and connected in with this I'm going to be giving you chakra updates and more now we do have this month uh, Jupiter conjunct Pluto and it's really amping off moving to December so what I'm preparing to do for you guys is trying to get everything as organized as possible so you guys know what's coming up in your chakras what's coming up in your charts so you're well and truly prepared for each transit now we are having mercury in scorpio going direct on the 3rd of november and i think most of us will be relieved by that factor we're also having mars and aries direct on the 14th of november and then we're going to be having neptune in pisces direct on the 29th so yet again we will be glad that those planets are going direct it's not to say we're out of the woods, but you know, most of what's really coming up is very much connected to our health with the Taurus uh, full moon that we had on the 31st, which again, I'll still be making references to it because it's still through the month will be resonating and connecting with your charts. And then we're going to be having a new moon in Scorpio at 23 degrees, which is the critical degrees, and it's on the 15th. But yet again, I will connect in with that. And then last but least, before we get into your actual chart, zodiac by zodiac, we have the full moon in Gemini at 9 degrees on the 30th of November, which is a lunar eclipse. And it is connected to the nodes. So we do currently have the north node in Gemini and the south node in Sagittarius. Now, for each of you, that nodal effect will take on a very different vibration. We're moving towards the energy of Gemini, which is a transformative period, which is connected to 2, 2.5 years. So there are themes that are going to be coming up and definitely it will be quite pivotal connected to this lunar eclipse in Gemini. Now, it can link back to May when the nodes did shift, where we did have a new moon. Um, at two degrees on the 22nd of May. So again, we will look at those energies and we'll tap into your charts and tell you how it goes. For those of you that you do want a reading, you can go, as I mentioned, to the link below. Now let's get into your messages. Now into your reading, Scorpio, a very warm welcome. And I trust that hopefully as this month progresses, you guys will feel more yourselves. You may be um, yeah, feeling yourself a lot more. That's because at the moment we do have the energy of Mercury in Scorpio, which is your first house placement. Uh, with first house placement, it's the place of self-esteem, it's self-development. Um, it's in Mercury. So um, again, you know, much of your movement and the way you've been dealing with some of the adversity with Aries and Chiron retrograde might have been a little bit testing. Maybe some crosswires, people misunderstanding you, maybe even feeling that you need to be private because people are misunderstanding you during this time. However, even going deep into your psyche and looking at the elements of what's hidden could have been coming up during this time. Going over old ground, uh, you know, the need for privacy, tapping into your spirituality and assessing and taking stock where you are. Now, at the beginning of the month, or rather the day before the beginning of the month, we are having the full moon in Taurus, which is the time in which I'm releasing these videos. There can be synchronistic events that happen around this time. It is going to be linking in with your seventh house placement of marriages, contracts, partnerships. And my aim with these videos is really to give you the toolbox to help you go through the whole month, step by step, um, area by area. So you know exactly what could be playing out for you and maybe how to directly relate to it and balance through it. And I will be in this video providing you a comprehensive report in all areas. So you're able to actually pull forward, pull back, look at the imagery, and it will link to each house that it is talking about. I'm also going to be doing a chakra report for your individual zodiac sign to help you balance to the best of your ability through this transit. And to gain the best out of it, um, I've also connected the dots 
linking with your romance house, but I will be doing a very separate video uh, that is live and it's psychic tarot and oracle. So if you're very new to the channel, a very warm welcome, click the bell and you'll get a notification of when I'm coming live. I'll try and put a mini video up saying coming live and also keep an eye on the community tab. Now, those of you that have followed me for goodness knows how long, Thank you for coming with me along on this ride of the development and the transformation. And I'm really going to try and move forward to 2021, providing you guys with a whole lot more content, really getting it to the point it's simplified to a degree. The nodes in Gemini for all of us collectively are we're students, but we're also looking at unique ways that we can interconnect with our communication and understanding and become part of uh, the people, so to speak. Okay, so back to you. Let's put all eyes on you, Scorpio. So the seventh house placement. With the axis of seventh and first house placement. Now, the reason I've mentioned seventh is because of the Taurus full moon. Now, on the 31st, uh, it is making a conjunction point to Uranus and Taurus, which again, linking to the seventh house. There could be something major happening or needing to finalize certain things. This can be maybe a, and again, it, it's, Venus is luxury. Um, it, it also, this month is going to link to food, uh, to do with earthly matters, to do with um, luxuries that we have and the luxury within um, the connections we have. Some of them sometimes accidentally we can take uh, for granted and other times we can feel we're the ones that are taken um, for granted. But with the Taurus energy and Aries and Chiron, which is in your eighth house, you may have wounds linking to uh, maybe resources, money, um, who's providing, how to move forward with situations. And most of us collectively over many, many decades have really moved into um, needing to be responsible for ourselves, maybe feeling quite alone at times and that we have to do everything. We've got to wear two hats. Uh, November's an 11 vibration, which is getting into yin and yang. Um, even interacting with uh, masculines and feminines at the moment is sort of like a yin and yang, but not in a very balanced way at the moment till Mars goes direct due to the fact that at the very end of the transit, it can become very intensified. So heated words in the first week, misunderstandings. We just need to be really mindful of that, that it is going to ease out. We will see eye to eye, uh, not necessarily on everything, but it doesn't need to get us to the point where we've got, you know, um, emotional overload with it and the fuses are flicked. So because uh, most of the masculine planets had been retrograde. We do have Jupiter direct. Depending on whether you're a male or a female, we all have those elements inside us. Um, once Mars goes direct, we'll feel more balanced. We will have Aries and Chiron, the wounded healer, retrograde till December 15th, but that's going to help us deal with those emotions inside of those situations. So be prepared for something to occur in your marriages, contracts, partnership sector. Also, if you need to bring something into a head and you've got to let go of something, this can be feeling you don't resonate with um, some situations that you don't resonate with your job. It could be a partner. It could be a friendship group. Um, maybe the responsibilities inside of those things or resolving things um, and seeing the beauty in the lesson and seeing the beauty in those people but making peace with the situation. Now the Scorpio full moon is hitting your first house placement. Again, Mercury by this stage on the 3rd will be going direct and on the 15th we will have the new moon in Scorpio at 23 degrees. So if you're feeling like you're wanting to change things up, it's quite funny because with certain planets retrograde we tend to um, maybe not, we're, we're called upon to reflect, not necessarily, I'm tongue twisted, react. As Mercury goes direct, you will feel more in alignment with how you're feeling. You won't feel like you're pulled in a hundred directions. You will feel more um, balanced. You may have had a lot of errands you had to run because it's, it's Mercury oriented energy. Uh, maybe having to keep your cards close to your chest because people may misinterpret you from your frustration. And sometimes it's merely just stating, um, by the way, you know, I'm actually quite overwhelmed. I've got a lot on my plate at the moment. Please don't take it personal. I'm doing the very best I can. Because of Aries and Chiron, uh, all of us collectively have wounds, but it's sometimes we can accidentally hurt the ones we love or they can hurt us and we're not meaning to. So by the time we do have both Mercury 
um, going direct in your first house, you will feel different. You may also come to a place where you spiritually feel you are a newer version of yourself and romance can really bloom around this time as well, but we'll get into that in the romance section of this report. There can be something that you decide to um, make a decision on. And again, with the previous moon that I discussed moving into November, uh, there were a lot of things to do with our health coming up, especially with Aries and Chiron. So if you feel um, maybe that you've had tension and stress and there's been um, t tummy ailments and things to that degree through nervous energy, requirements, stability, um, crosswise, again, throat chakra can be coming up. But you within your own energy, I feel it's more you are having a soul walk and you're going through a deep transformation. As we do have different planets going direct, it will ease up. But the new moon in Scorpio is an opportunity to look at those areas after the retrograde. Um, I do suggest highly that, you know, around this time you wait two to three days after. But again, you could be really having some deep psychic energies of downloads about what you want to be, how you want to look. It could be changing your wardrobe, changing your hair, changing your diet um, to healthier food, maybe expressing yourself more openly uh, about how you feel with situations because all through the month you have heavy third house placement and Mercury um, is in your house of communication. So uh, speaking about the challenges, maybe talking about those things, balancing these responsibilities and especially with uh, Pluto at the moment, it's making a huge aspect in all elements of our lives collectively that we do need to look at the give and take in connections. Is there something we need to change up? We can't take accountability for other people, but we can try and come to the table. And it's almost like a negotiation, but there's a lot of karmic lessons really linking in with it, but it's positive in the long run because we make healthier decisions based on those energies. You also may feel that you're wanting to really pull in your connections and make peace. Um, and this can be them as well, but I do feel something major happening um, around the time of Mercury going direct. There can be triggers on the first week, so bear that in mind, but we'll get into that report in a minute. Uh, but also by the time you do reach the new moon in Scorpio, I do feel you'll be feeling very differently about everything you've been dealing with. Now, as I mentioned, we've talked about the moon energy. We are having at the beginning of the month, sun in Scorpio conjunct Uranus and Taurus. Now this is the axis of the first and the seventh house. And oh my goodness, Scorpio, I so feel you. And it's funny because I actually do have in my natal chart, uh, very similar placements, but will leave me out of this equation. From my experience, however, it is a very complicated, um, it's a large lesson. First house placement, uh, you deeply are transforming. Through the nodal energy, I experienced that in a transit. And what I did find on the end of that transit is not necessarily was everything I felt I had to be required by other people, but it was almost a role I took on inside of situations. And that's why the coaching and looking at your life and really shifting things about the reflection on situations and then moving forward with your, your psychic downloads, your new findings, your new learnings, a bit like, you know, doing an audit on a business, uh, looking at them and going, okay, how am I inside of these things? What takes me to my higher ground? Um, who am I within my own energy? Sun energy can be ego. It can be happening something on a 3D level. Uh, the conjunction point is bringing something to a head within these connections to transform it for the betterment of all involved. So please do trust the process. We also will have Mercury in Scorpio on the second squaring Saturn in Capricorn, which is the axis of, again, throat chakra and you. <laughs> um, much of that till about the third is going to be there. So we do need to be really careful with communication. This can also be traveling. Be cautious with traveling because cognitive energy as well as transport, Gemini, Mercury energy. Uh, in the first few days, it can be you feel a bit foggy and that's more than likely linking in with Mars um, and Uranus and Taurus with crown chakra. So keep your fluid up. Pay attention to your diet and your tactile needs in your connection. So you also could be beautifying things. Um, and this can be like fine tuning things or, or maybe even sometimes, and I'm not really feeling that with you guys. You're being very rational, but we'll get into that a little bit further. 
by the time we reach the full tenth, we are having Mars in Aries going direct. Now, we also do have, as I've mentioned previously, Aries and Chiron retrograde. That will be retrograde and it is taking an element of Mars on for a few years, but it's going direct December 15th. So although we may have more energy moving forward with Mars going direct, uh, that middle pocket in the first week to two weeks can be a little bit trigger worthy. You may feel more tired. You may feel more inclined to um, look at things and go, wow, I need to change things around. Why am I feeling so fatigued? Obviously, if you feel you need to check up, this is a great month to do that because of wound energy, Mars. Um, we can have a lot of inflammation during these things. Um, sometimes with the scorpionic energy, uh, that it can be something hidden and we don't really know uh, what that is. So needing to really tap into our psyche and researching situations further with the nodes in Gemini. But as Mars goes direct, um, you may be looking at your finances, your shared resources, anything in your life that you need to let go of. This can even be from the Taurus element, um, something that you had in previous connections, something that a friend gave you. Maybe it needs repairing. Maybe you have outgrown it and it just doesn't resonate with your um, Venus energy of um, decorations inside your home and things to that degree. But there is finances here really coming up and psychology surrounding whatever you're directly dealing with, um, what you need to let go of. Wounds can link to potentially not having that in the past. It's sort of the house of healthy codependency. So example fact, single parent needing daycare, healthy codependency, that I can depend on. Um, single parent, uh, you know, not giving money, um, having a toxic friend, that friend saying they'll be there, then they don't show up. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like lesson learned, right? So it's shifting towards that of what we have learned, that of what we can and can't depend on and shifting it about to a point it's creating a very solid foundation. And, you know, anywhere from the first to the ninth house uh, is sort of really things inside your own control, uh, sort of things that you do learn lesson wise. Uh, that and beyond, pretty much from the 8th and beyond, can be situational ships outside of yourself, but from the 1st to the 7th, you know, those areas, the middle ground, you have developed tools in your life to aid you. Some of this with the first house placement, it can be that suddenly you just feel everything is different, which does make sense. Look what's happening in the collective. Uh, but trusting that process, not getting too fixated and knowing that all those tools that you um, had from the past and the adversity you've moved through, you can utilize it to build that bridge and move forward and you are safe and loved. So we've mentioned the Scorpio new moon, 23 degrees, keep that in mind. Caution with the energy of um, your routine, that can be coming up for changes. Uh, the the hard-hitting day, I would say, will be the beginning of the week. Uh, definitely on the 9th, be careful because situations surrounding yin and yang with masculine and feminine can be crosswise. The psychology behind situations can be coming up. Uh, but definitely you'll get back on the page where you're feeling more intuitively guided to where you want to be and how you want things to be. Cars and things to that degree can come into this situation with the third house placement. And as Mercury goes direct, you may find the axis of um, Saturn and Capricorn bringing about changes. This can be car related dynamics. It can be technology. Uh, it also can be with the psychology element of things pretty much um, in certain pockets through the month going over old ground, talking about where you were previously, but we'll get into that romantically speaking. Um, sometimes it can come across as, um, you know, it's kind of having an intuition about something and being guided to it, but it can be things relating to the past. The sun is entering Sagittarius, which is hitting your second house. So pay attention to your self-esteem, get grounded, uh, and all should be fine. The sun entering Sagittarius can really be that Jupiter energy again, the axis of the eighth house. Wanting to now look at, okay, regardless of what happened in your past, regardless of the wounds with Aries and Chiron, what can we do to move forward? This can be with your contracts, with your marriages, with your partnerships, your, your siblings, your 
um, your tribe, really, what do we do to move forward? And you're going to have a lot more strength to do it. Just be careful the way it comes through because sun energy is 50-50, I'll just say. You know, sometimes we can get through and we deem sun as ego, but it's also that passion with Mars going direct where you're going to have the energy to do all that Jupiter work that you're needing to do. Then we have Venus entering Scorpio away from Libra and into Scorpio. So you will feel more yourself. Um, now, on the 29th, we are having Neptune in Pisces going direct. Subjects to do with children, subjects to do with your hopes and dreams. I mean, and it was funny because I have a friend, um, a couple of friends that are Scorpio. And for some reason, I was dreaming of them with babies. So I don't know, this can be a psychic download. Tell me how it lands. With the fifth house placement, it's also birthing a new situation. It can be um, co-creation, manifestation. It can be children, romance, and luck. You will feel more with all your hopes and dreams and your psychology behind it. It's going to be in more alignment. Then we're having on the 30th, the lunar eclipse with the full moon in Gemini, which again is linking to the eighth house placement. So we'll talk about that more when we do link to the eclipse energy. Let's get into the area of your chakra report to keep you balanced during the month. And again, feel free to drop me a message if you feel something's coming up and I can have a look at it and I can give you a bit of support during this transit. If you are wanting to make a booking and you do feel there are spiritual blockages coming up or you need coaching or you want to cross-reference between your partners, yours and other persons, etc., with their astrology, feel free to book a reading and I can tune into it further for you. Big time, very separately, I will say because of the third house placement, it is going to be throat chakra. Now, also with your health, you may feel with the axis of the second and the third, uh, your emotions, your feelings. It can be also psychology and things that you feel have been hidden from you. Looking at those things, again, emotional um, stability can come up. And when I say that, it is due to the transit. It's not a personal thing. So with the Virgo element inside of Throat Chakra, it both links to Gemini and Virgo. Uh, looking at your health, looking at your balance, um, maybe situations to do with children coming up. But again, Throat Chakra balance. If you feel it's blocked and things are coming up and you're going, what on earth is this? As Mercury goes direct, it does link to Throat Chakra. It's almost like universe guide source is asking us to meditate stop maybe think before we speak trust our truth and it could be due to wounds that things are coming up i already feel you guys are doing that i think that you're being very careful about the way in which you communicate you have that um cognitive um ability to be able to tap into those things and read in between the lines there we're also going to be having um, heart chakra activation. That is due to the Venus element of both uh, the Libra element and Taurus. So heart chakra and higher heart chakra with Aries and Chiron. So eating the food groups, doing guided meditation. Obviously, if you feel sick, go and see a medical practitioner. I am not um, from that domain. I'm speaking from a holistic astrological chakra point of view so gems linking in with um pink uh pink quartz uh jade can help with the heart chakra um doing guided meditation eating the foods from the food group and with the taurus moon plus we had the libra moon we're really tapping into that and creating balance uh, to to bring that equilibrium back so we're feeling more in alignment we were eating quite a bit uh, when it did come to Mars retrograde it might have been you know fuel that just kept you going but it really wasn't working uh, but we'll get into the health report in a moment the other energy that's coming up due to Aries is solar plexus and it's both with your zodiac sign and with Aries so the solar plexus are coming up really tapping into that utilizing crystals to help balance it out what's another area for you guys in particular let me look crown chakra uh keep the fluid intake up the days that you're going to need that more so let me look let me look let me look hmm on the 8th the 15th the 19th and uh, pretty much the whole month, but those are the two bing bang days, <laughs> if you wish me to be perfectly honest. Um, and definitely on the 31st. So crown chakra can be activated, use amethyst. Um, anything where you're feeling something's hidden from you, 
guided meditation, getting anchored in. Uh, also with root chakra as well, it is coming. If you're getting lower back pains and things to that degree, obviously get a check, but root chakra, the utilization of obstining um, can make you feel very stable. Now health, as I mentioned, sometimes we can be looking at things and very rarely do I talk about, whole, well, I have holistic and things to that degree, but with the axis of the full moon in Taurus, Uranus and Taurus, um, our spirituality, our belief systems, our emotions, what's happening in the collective, plus what's coming up in your astrology. With the third house placement, it is to do with consumption. So whatever that consumption is, be it it's higher or lower frequency, pay attention to it. Tap into the emotions and the psychology surrounding it. Uh, and providing you're doing things that you feel spiritually for yourself as in balance, you should be fine. Uh, with Aries and Chiron, be mindful that you can become run down. Uh, Mars retrograde have been really hectic. So a lot of people are very, very tired, very worn out where we had time to meditate and, you know, just to not do anything at all that really helped us. Um, some people are feeling antsy due to the fact of what's happening in the collective and not being able to do those things and having the freedom to do it. So transmuting that energy into something healthy is really going to be beneficial. Uh, if you can't, there's not much you can do. You know, you do the best you can, but you might feel more vital by mid-month. Again, when it does come to the psychology and emotions, I do feel your routine may be very busy. I also feel there's lots of changes. Oh, I'm feeling social energy coming through, but again, it will be with your niche tribe. Well, with your work, if you haven't been busy, I do not know. Communication's the key. If you guys aren't working, it's a great time during Mercury going direct in your first house to actually advertise yourself. This is a fantastic time to launch things. It's your first house placement. We're having aspects to Jupiter and Capricorn. So really, you know, go out there, get yourself out there. I do feel there can be even positions and advancements providing we've put our best foot forward. And I do feel with crosswise and anything that oh, at a very arduous level you've been dealing with, it's going to start clearing up. Cognitive energy of concentration is going to come back due to the fact that we are having uh, Mars going direct, Mercury going direct, Neptune in Pisces going direct, cognitively speaking. Again, dealing with any subjects to do with romance, luck, children. Um, this should kind of balance back out. Your perspective may be very different hopes and dreams. Uh, you know, they, they will feel a lot better. Now, from a monetary point of view, inside of your career sector, again, money may have been going on vehicles, technology, um, there might have been a lot of responsibilities really linking to uh, your routine, getting back and forward. Uh, also beauty related dynamics. This could be most recently in this month where money comes in and you're wanting to beautify situations with the full moon and Taurus. Now, this could be a great time to prepare, um, potentially because we are having Venus entering Scorpio, Sun entering Sagittarius. You may wish to expand the home and there's money going into certain situations. It can be food-based energies where you're preparing for New Year's and Christmas. Nevertheless, there is money going towards these areas. And again, fuel consumption, etc., linking to that. Some of you will also be getting new devices. If you could avoid it, uh, it'd be better to Mercury direct, but this may have already panned out. Uh, make sure you do read your fine contracts, even beyond Mercury direct, because you will find things missing. I mean, I've had that and it's, this happens every Mercury retrograde. I think it's every business owner's absolute nightmare that follows astrology and knows Mercury's going retrograde. You'll be going to an ATM and trying to do a transaction and it's glitching and you're feeling highly amused. And you know, Mercury's the, the, one of the largest jokes in society these days. It's one of the most common kind of transits that people do discuss, but there's so many other elements as we develop even further, we learn these things. So make sure you do check your fine print. 
Some of you also could be transiting positions. So, you know, if you're really feeling the job isn't resonating with you, uh, you may go from level A to level B, which is up in a rank. You may move departments. You may feel that just is not for you. Maybe you were tying up a bill and that's why you stayed. This can even be linking to government payments and things to that degree, looking at the bigger picture, getting that foundation sorted so that you can move forward. But it does benefit any which way you guys are in the money and career sector, you know, tying up those loose ends, making major plans, even if you got yourself in a mess, it's what are we going to do to move forward from here? Uh, that's really where, you know, uh, it's almost saying the glass is half full, not the glass is half empty. Looking at it from a different perspective, uh, Mars going direct will give you a bit more energy to achieve those things. Balancing the sacral chakra and solar plexus will help you tap into that co-creative energy and it'll get the ball moving in all departments of life, law, finance and career. Many of you may have got to a point that again, you were in hermit mode. Scorpio is very private. Uh, although in your chart, I'm really not saying that potentially that was an ability. If you have had time to actually take some time out, uh, fantastic. And you know, if you have been there way too long, my thoughts with you. With Saturn in Capricorn, it's third house placement, it's Gemini. There might've been challenges, you know, uh, miscommunication, having to run around after situations. It might've been via telephone. Um, you know, all of those arduous situations that play out during a Mercury retrograde and you being piggy in the middle of that situation with families, um, with home, you may find that providing you can balance that third house placement out, uh, you know, it, it's always great during a retrograde to be looking at these things and rest assured Capricorn will be leaving both Saturn and Jupiter next month and moving into 2021. The stresses on the third house will be much better. You also may, as I mentioned, be, um, uh, getting new technology. Uh, this can be fridges, it can be washing machines, uh, it can be uh, situations linking to technology, um, televisions, internet, um, cars, uh, but also do look at your emotions inside of those things. But your day-to-day -day routine is really highlighted in this department. So if there's frustration, maybe it, there is a conversation linking to who's doing what, who's doing the dishes, who's taking the trash out. Um, you know, especially with your friends and your parents and however it relates, looking at that, there can be frustration initially because Mercury was retrograde. Uh, but by the time we do have the new moon in Scorpio, you'll find that some of these situations you'll be feeling more yourself. You'll, you'll start getting more on top of your emotions, but there's large benefits for financial gain during this time. Now, as to other areas of life, I do feel with Venus entering Scorpio, again, it can be people really seeing your side, but again, you're just going to feel more yourself. So the trigger points will still come due to the fact that we have Aries and Chiron retrograde. And that's there till I meant, well, as I mentioned, till December the 15th. But really just having that cognitive awareness that anything that comes up needs to come up. It's meant to. If there's conflict, really dealing with it in the most um, grounded adult way possible. And sometimes people do take things the wrong way and there's really nothing you can do about that. I do see a lot of healing inside of these areas though and transformations. Look, we always talk about the aspect that the wounded healer is in a child wounds. So with family related dynamics and the fact that you have Mars in Aries in the eighth house, there may have been wounds to do with shared resources, given taking connections, maybe you being a sole breadwinner, maybe not having that ability to have those things. Um, so however it directly lands for you, belief systems and conditioning connected to family can be coming through. So just bear that in mind. Try to not take a personal, do the inner work. Uh, this is going to balance out. I feel with the love domain, communication is really going to be the key. If you have been waiting and meditating upon what to do, how to, how to do something within this connection, be it you're together or not, with the element of love, there has been deep, deep reflection in this area. Now, a lot of the seventh house placement has been coming up for you guys, especially with the sun in Scorpio, conjunct Uranus and Taurus. Now, although we have that area of life in retrograde for a little bit more, let me quickly look at the chart. I didn't write it down, did I? No, I did. It goes direct the 1st of January. 
there's still going to be that element there where you're tuning into it. How do you get to that higher ground? Where are we going from here? What are we going to do? But ultimately, with Aries and Chiron retrograde, there's a lot of meditation here. And I feel with the first house placement and the third house placement, you actually thinking on what you need to say, sometimes at times potentially getting triggered, frustrated, but really communicating a truth and, and wondering to yourself, is it okay for me to be authentically me? Is it okay if I speak this way? And, and, and sometimes you don't even need to be doing that. It may be people just are misinterpreting exactly what you're saying and how you're feeling. So I'm seeing crosswise. As Mercury goes direct, I do feel, uh, you know, any contention and subjects to do with love can come up. On the 9th, we do have Venus in Libra conjunct Mars and Aries. I'm seeing psychology here. I'm seeing, you know, marriages, contracts, partnerships. We do have most of the masculine planets direct. Mars will be going direct on the 14th. So on the 9th, it doesn't have to be that there's something wrong with that person or that belief system or the connection, but you will get the yin and yang not being completely balanced. So remember that date. Try not to take a personal, take stock of it, meditate and to move forward from there. And it doesn't mean don't operate and don't interconnect with the world and love and that it's never going to be or it's not going to be balanced, but it can bring up the yin and yang that is imbalanced to look at it and, and just not take it personal on that date. By the time we do have Venus moving into your zodiac sign, you can be very attracted to all. So if you're really detaching, reintegrating, um, changing within your demeanor, maybe having a lot of trigger points connected to love in the past, especially with the 12th house, mem remembering the past, past tense pains, past tense hurts, where people would let you down. 12th house is uh, a spiritual one. It can be also hidden secrets, enemies, um, social responsibilities, either inside your life or another person's. Um, house of imprisonment. Uh, illicit affairs, things to that degree. So, you know, even conditioning inside a family, because as I mentioned previously with home and family, it always links back to childhood and a conditioning. So when it comes to love, they always say we attract it. You know, we ended up marrying our mother or our father. And I don't mean that in a physical level. I mean, in a personality factor with those scenarios. And nine times out of 10, we try to transform that. And with time comes growth. So breaking those conditionings and looking at the new version of what society is, what we are inside of those connections is going to help us balance those things out. I am feeling you guys are going to be deeply attractive by mid-month and on fire, so to speak. Uh, this could cause a bit of jealousy inside of connections. There might be a bit of flirting. There might be a bit of playful energy. Uh, you may be wanting to move forward. And again, I, I connect in with the astrology there are hundreds of you that deal with different circumstances. 100% if you want me to read you and your partners, you and your love interest chart, we can delve deep. But this month I am doing an additional psychic um, tarot and oracle reading live. So please don't think this is it. There is a lot more to come. Uh, also with Twin Flame and Astrology and Human Resonance updates. Hopes and dreams for my beautiful Scorpios. Now, you guys are always innately very, very psychic. I'm seeing with the axis of the 12th house, the hidden realm, Neptune retrograde, we always tend to get more psychic downloads around that time. You need to pay attention to the signs. What is your psychology surrounding a situation? How are you feeling? What is your hunch and a deed telling you? You are the, what would we call you? I've forgotten the name, the term. You are the detectives of the zodiac signs. You would be great investigators, um, psychologists. You, you are able to draw the truth out of people. They can't hide the truth from you. So I'm hearing the term liar, liar. And it's only because you intuitively know what you know. So sitting with that away from the triggers as Mercury goes direct, Neptune is helping you go into the dream state, crown chakra activation with your hopes and dreams. Pay attention to what your guides are showing you. Pay attention to what you feel away from the ego of fear, of failure, or mm, past. Take it from the here and now of what those downloads are. And distinguish between what was the past and a wound 
and what is occurring here in the 3D right now. And, you know, rebuilding that intuition, rebuilding that relationship with your gut instincts and your intuitive mind, because I do feel many of you, if you can get grounded, uh, it's been heavy in astrology, I'll just be honest, you will be able to uh, see the light of day with these dreams. Now, as for your dreams, third house placement, a lot of responsibilities when it does come to your daily routine, pulling things in, you do have what it takes. As it comes to working in this industries with technology, um, be it it's via the internet or it's in your local area and you're having to travel quite a bit, you are going to do well. It is looking very beneficial for you. As the sun enters into Sagittarius and Venus enters into Scorpio, new positions, hopes and dreams can come through. So if you felt this is it for life, nope, I'm here to tell you it's not. There can be great, great things happening this month out of left field, both at the beginning, the middle um, and towards the end. With the Gemini moon, which I will discuss next, around those times we need to be checking back to May and beyond. So we'll keep it at May at the moment, merely because the nodes shifted in May. We had the new moon in Gemini. It was at two degrees on the 22nd, which is interesting. Two, two, two. Last but not least, we have the moon in Gemini. Okay, now this is an eclipse and it does link back, as I mentioned, to May. We do have this here for 2.5 years. It is the North Node, that of which in a very karmic sense, we are moving and shifting towards to learn new lessons. When you look at the energy of Gemini, it's education, it's socialization, it's recreational activities. Um, it can be your daily routine, the way in which you communicate, the way you balance things, uh, how open you can be and receptive to situations. Let's have a look. It's your eighth house placement. So all of this is going to be bring up and, and you know, my biggest tip is look back to May. Look back and give yourself a pat on the back. Where were you back then and where are you now? Now that can be financially. It could be in a movement sense. It could be how your routine is versus how it was back then. Uh, you know, routine and mercury energy um, can link to home energy as well because, you know, it's the direct routine related dynamic. It's your throat chakra. You have a lot of throat chakra. Even look at the way you communicated previously uh, versus uh, your belief systems now inside yourself. Now, when it does come to uh, communication, this could be information coming in relating to your finances, relating to situations, check your policies. Uh, but also have a look at synchronistic events that were happening around May. We did have the energy of Cancer and Capricorn previously, which was really heavy. And I still see it energetically playing out due to the fact that we have Saturn, Jupiter and Pluto in Capricorn, which is heavy. I have the analogy on YouTube of the tire popped, no partner there to help you. Everyone's MIA. That's the Capricorn energy because everyone's taking accountability and required to on their side of the fence. So we tend to have less support. It's uh, anything we tap into seems to have so much more. Uh, it's a bit like opening a policy. It's like you, you have to read the fine print and you're going, yep, yep, yep. You don't even know what you're signing up to. Then it's all this responsibility connected to it. So it's, again, Mercury retrograde, read the fine print. Looking at these things, this is going to be a big kickoff and some decisions that happen this month moving to the lunar eclipse can really amplify forward to moving you forward over the next six to 12 months. And as I mentioned, it's going to be there for two and a half years. The south node of where you're moving away from, and I don't tend to find that you move away from it. It's more both energies are transforming and allow both of those things to transform. So for you, Sagittarius is hitting your second house, your self-esteem, your natural resources, your land value, your, your value inside of yourself, um, in a sense of what people are going to pay you, um, how they see you, how you show up in the world. It is what we eat and consume as well. So pay attention to that self-esteem related dynamics, both from the first and the second, uh, you will find differing things coming through. Now, I'd love to thank you guys, Scorpio, for joining me. I hope this transit report has helped you. Please write a comment in the bottom and tell me which one to you was, you know, really hitting home. If there were any questions, I'm happy to answer any questions. 
please click the bell so that you can get notifications of the new content coming up. Stay tuned for the deep romance psychic read. I do super chat questions during the end of each video and sometimes during, and I just connect with you guys so we can channel the direct energy. So if you do want a deep love report, very separate to this, I will be live regularly during the month, connecting in with the astrology, the Schumann residents, um, twin flame journey. I do coaching. So I'll see you on the other side. Have a great month, Scorpio. Love you.